I didn't do a post-fight video for Badu Jack against George Groves last weekend because I didn't actually see the fight when it happened. I saw it during the week. So this is not really a post-fight video as such. It's more a aftermath video, the aftermath of Badu Jack versus George Groves and what this loss means for George Groves, what went wrong, why it went wrong, and where he should go from here. Now, most people seem to be blaming George Groves' failure against Badu Jack and also his two failures, really, against Carl Frutch on his trainer, Paddy Fitzpatrick. But I actually take exception to that idea because George Groves is held in, or was held, in relatively high regard, mainly because of his... Uh, performance in the first Carl Frutch fight a lot of people felt he actually lost the James DeGale fight and after the James DeGale fight they felt that he looked okay but nothing spectacular it's really the first Carl Frutch fight that boosted George Groves' stock made him almost a household name in the UK and made people believe in him this was a guy who dropped Carl Frutch in the first round and hurt him like no other but what people strangely seem to be overlooking is the fact that he wasn't trained by Adam Booth for that first Carl Frotch fight. He was trained by Paddy Fitzpatrick. And it's not like Paddy Fitzpatrick trained him for half of the camp or something. You know, like Adam Booth left him halfway through the camp. No, he had a full camp with Paddy Fitzpatrick. And not only that, Paddy Fitzpatrick was part of the Adam Booth setup for several years. If you go back and look at the articles online, because I remember at the time, Paddy Fitzpatrick was brought in by Adam Booth, according to what the newspapers were saying, the interviews they were doing with Booth. Paddy Fitzpatrick was brought in by Adam Booth to help come up with a strategy for Groves to beat James DeGale. So this guy has been part of the setup for a long, long time. And Adam Booth's been bringing him in to help with strategy. And you look at Groves against Frotch in that first fight. He wasn't boxing in a traditional Adam Booth style in terms of moving around the ring and then jumping in with shots. He was actually going forward against Cole Frotch. He was aggressive in that fight and he was actually trying to fight on the inside. He'd seen things. I could tell from the way he was fighting. He'd seen things in the Andre Ward fight and he was trying to emulate those things that Andre Ward did. And one of the things particularly that he was trying to do is the mauling on the inside that Ward was doing and getting an angle so he could hit Carl Froch with a left hook. If you watch the first George Groves Carl Frotch fight, you'll see that that's what Groves was doing on the inside. On the inside, he was trying to get an angle and then hit Frotch with a left hook because he knows that Frotch is always open to a left hook, which is something I said before Frotch for Andre Ward. I could see Andre Ward hitting him with that left hook all night long. So Groves and Paddy Fitzpatrick had obviously analysed that Ward-Frotch fight and tried to take a lot of things that Ward did from it and do it themselves to Carl Frotch. And that is, again, down to... Paddy Fitzpatrick and George Groves. That can't be what Adam Booth had in mind because he wasn't there for the whole camp. That was a game plan that Paddy Fitzpatrick and George Groves came up with. Okay, so I think that the criticism of Paddy is, in my opinion, unfair. I don't think that George Groves' failure are, failures are down to Paddy Fitzpatrick from a technical point of view anyway. I don't think so. I mean, I know he didn't look great against Rabras and uh, the other guy. I can't remember his name. Mama's boy, the little short guy, short Southpaw guy. I can't remember his name. He didn't look great against them guys, but he was coming off a devastating knockout loss. And I think that in the Rabras fight anyway, he was fighting with his hands up a lot more and going for volume. And that was a particular style they came up with for that particular fighter. And I think Paddy Fitzpatrick, if you heard him in the corner of Groves, or, you know, heard him from the corner during the fight while the fight was going on with Christopher Abras. Fitzpatrick kept telling Groves, keep your hands up, because I think Fitzpatrick was worried that Groves might get caught again the way he got caught against Carl Froch in the rematch. So 
The hands up style is not a Paddy Fitzpatrick style. Paddy, F Paddy Fitzpatrick was coming up with different styles and different game plans depending on the opponent because as you saw in the Carl Frotz rematch, he didn't box as aggressively as he did in the first Carl Frotch fight. It was a different style. In the first fight, he was pressing the action, coming forward, very aggressive. In the second fight, he was boxing more and it was more of actually what people would call the traditional Adam Booth style. Where he was trying to feint himself into position. He was trying to counter punch. That's what he was doing in the rematch. And again, that was with F Paddy Fitzpatrick and it was a typical Adam Booth style. <coughs> so, I don't think, I'm, I'm getting to my point, just bear with me. I don't think George Groves' failure or failures are down to any technical deficiencies, you know, the technical deficiencies of Paddy Fitzpatrick. I think it's more down to the fact that psychologically there is an issue there with George Groves and also the fact that maybe he's just not that good. Has anyone ever contemplated that? That maybe it don't matter which trainer he was with whether it was Booth or Paddy Fitzpatrick maybe he's just not that good and maybe he was always going to lose the two Frotch fights particularly the second fight and the Badu Jack fight it's not like Adam Booth fighters don't lose fights they do where was Adam Booth's master you know incredible strategy when David Hay fought Vladimir Klitschko that was a very one dimensional strategy by the Hay Camp. All right? And I've always been quite critical of Adam Booth over the years. I don't think he is, from a technical point of view, a very good trainer. I think one thing which I will say, and maybe this does have some type of impact on George Groves, but I've said this also from the beginning. One area which I believe Adam Booth is very strong is the psychological aspect of boxing. And apparently he has a degree in sports psychology or something like that. So maybe that's why. But from the psychological point of view, yeah, I think Booth does give something to his fighters and he is good in that particular aspect. And maybe that is what George Groves lacked. So maybe I'm contradicting myself slightly, but most people seem to be focusing on the technical side of things with Paddy Fitzpatrick in terms of their criticisms of it. But I don't think this problem with Groves is technical as much as it is psychological. I'm not saying Groves don't have technical problems. He does, but I don't see any more technical problems under Fitzpatrick than what he had under Booth. I think it's more a psychological issue here. And particularly after the first Frotch fight, George Groves' ego expanded to a size that was almost unmanageable. And it, it, it was so weird in the build-up to the, to the Frotch Groves rematch. It's like the roles were reversed. In the first Frotch Groves fight, or in the lead-up to the first Frotch Groves fight, Frotch was the one who came across as arrogant and delusional. But after he beat Groves, obviously controversially in the first fight, the roles were reversed for the second fight. Frotch seemed down-to-earth and grounded in the lead-up to the second fight, and Grove seemed arrogant and delusional. It was incredible. The, the, the minute that Howard Foster stopped the first fight, Groves just turned into someone else. It's like he inherited Carl Frotch's personality after that first fight. Spooky stuff, people, I'm telling you. Because after that first fight, Carl Frotch turned from someone who... <coughs> was really dislikable. You know, I, I always felt like, just as a, as a personality, Carl Frotch was a really off character and just came across as a prick. But after that first fight, to me, he became more and more and more likable. <laughs> Actually, particularly after the second fight, more so than after the first fight. But you could see it starting after the first fight, especially in the build-up to the second fight. So their personalities reversed. Groves became delusional with this out of control ego, massive arrogance. And I think that has been his biggest problem. That arrogance and that ego. In the build up to the Badu Jack fight, he was saying, all I have to do basically is turn up because this is going to be an easy fight. It wasn't just saying he was going to win. He was saying this is going to be an easy fight and our skill levels are not close and all this kind of stuff. That is not a good mindset to be going into 
any fight with. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not a good mindset. So I think that's George Groves' biggest problem, his arrogance and his ego. The technical issues, yeah, they're there, but they've always been there under Booth and under Fitzpatrick. The bigger issue, I believe, is psychological with his arrogance and his ego. Where he goes from here? Well, Frank Warren actually wrote an article about this a couple of days ago. And he was basically saying that George Groves is going to have to tread water for a while because a couple of his fighters are fighting for the WBA strap and I guess the regular strap. And they're going to have to, the winner of that is going to have to face Felix Sturm. <clears throat> um, and then you got James DeGale is probably going to end up having a unification with Badu Jack. And the winner of that is probably going to have to face some mandatory. So George Groves is going to be frozen out for a while. He's going to have to build himself back up. And I think that's a good thing because it will give him time to get his head straight. <clears throat> He's going to be out of the limelight for a while. I think this is a good thing. I really do. But it's up to George Groves. It, it, it all hinges on George Groves learning the lessons from his previous failures. And I think the lessons he needs to learn are keep your feet on the ground. Don't take anything for granted. Don't underestimate no one. Don't get gassed, man. And when I say gassed, again, people who don't understand the, some, some of the street vernacular, I'm not talking about getting tired, although people have criticized George Groves' stamina in the Badu Jack fight. He seemed to tire out as well. I'm talking about getting gassed in terms of don't let your head get gassed. Don't let your head, your ego get overinflated again. <clears throat> Don't start believing your own hype. That's the lesson that he needs to learn. And if he learns that lesson, that psychological lesson, and learns to be a bit more humble and just dedicates himself, then I think he can still do something. He could still probably pick up a world title. He does have ability. He's not that good. George Groves, and he's never going to be that good. But he does have ability. He can punch. He's fast. So... Yeah, maybe he could pick up a world title at some stage, but at this point in time, he's going to have to go through a re rehabilitation process and it's necessary. And uh, like I say, as long as he understands what went wrong, as, as long as he understands that he needs to humble himself, then it's all good. Now, I've seen Boxing Beats and Rhymes video about this Twitter issue where George Grove deleted his Twitter. And I agree with Beats that there's no issue with George Groves deleting his Twitter. Paddy Fitzpatrick seemed to make quite a big deal of it and act as though George Groves was disrespecting his fans by uh, deleting his Twitter. I don't really think he was disrespecting his fans. I think it shows... Uh, obviously, it shows some of George Groves' character because when James DeGale was fighting in leisure centres and stuff like that and his career wasn't really going anywhere fast, George Groves was kind of twisting the knife on James DeGale and kind of, you know, laughing at him and stuff like that. So when Groves ended up getting beat by Baddy Jack, James DeGale, I mean, I, James DeGale ain't really trolling, but he came out and said, look, a Groves fight can still happen, but I'm getting 90%, Groves is getting 10%. And DeGale is not joking. He's serious. <laughs> Even according to Eddie Hearn, DeGale's serious, by the way. That's not no joke thing. That's not trolling. And that might have been what triggered George Groves to delete his Twitter account. So, I don't know. But So, George Groves is cool with trolling James DeGale, but when James DeGale does it back to him, when he's, had, when he's on a downer, then all of a sudden, Groves wants to throw his dummy and delete his Twitter account. <laughs> so, it kind of shows up George Groves' attitude in that sense. But in terms of disrespecting the fans or whatever I mean yeah social media and Twitter is obviously a way to engage with the fans and it's a way of actually building a fan base because a lot of people who don't know about certain athletes or celebrities or whatever find out about them through Twitter so certainly Twitter has helped <clears throat> George Groves to some extent <clears throat> but at the same time uh, fighters and celebrities and whoever they get a lot of abuse on social media and Twitter is probably the worst for abuse because unlike 
uh, Facebook, which is somewhat private, and YouTube, which is not as engaging. Uh, you know, it don't have live comments and stuff like that. It's not as in your face and engaging as Twitter is. Unlike those two platforms, Twitter is a live platform which is constantly be update being updated every time someone tweets. So people get alerts on their phone and they're getting tweets constantly all the time. And when you're someone like George Groves that has that many followers, you're going to get a hell of a lot of abuse. I mean, you go into any boxer's Twitter and you're going to have people, you know, spouting all types of abuse. And I don't care who you are. I don't care how thick skinned you are. If you're on Twitter all the time, and you're seeing that kind of abuse 24 seven, that is going to affect you one way or another. It's either going to make you angry. It's either going to distract you. It's either going to make you insecure, self-conscious. It's going to do something. I'm telling you, it's going to affect you. So I'm not personally a fan. Well, I don't really think it's wise for fighters <clears throat> or anyone, to be honest with you, to be on Twitter all the time taking that kind of abuse. What for? I know a lot of fighters and even Frank Warren apparently has a team that run their Twitter for them. And I think that's better, better to be honest with you. I know the fans are not going to like it because of the fact that <clears throat> they're not actually engaging with the person themselves, but they're still going to get to see videos and this, that and the other. And maybe the actual person may come on Twitter every now and again. But I just think from a psychological point of view, it's not good for these fighters to be looking at all this abuse. So I don't really have a problem with George Groves deleting his Twitter per se. I probably think it's for the best. And in the, in the long term, he should just stay off Twitter, man. You know, Maybe go to a different social network. Maybe go to YouTube. Because I know YouTube, like I say, is not as engaging in terms of, you know, the fan engagement as Twitter is. But... He can have longer videos. He could put up his own interviews with his own people, put his training videos. You know, that's that's one thing. This is one platform, YouTube, which fighters don't use as much as I think they should. I don't know whether it's uh, restrictions due to their television deals or whatever. Maybe they're, they're not allowed to do their own thing on, on YouTube or whatever. I don't know. But, to me, it seems, yeah, that fighters don't utilize YouTube as much as they should because they could do all their interviews on YouTube on their own channel. They could do training videos and, you know, di training diaries and all that kind of stuff on their own channel. And they could build up massive subscriber bases on their own channel. I don't know why fighters don't do that. So maybe someone can tell me, is it some, some type of contractual stipulations which don't allow them to do it? with the TV networks they're signed to, why don't they actually do that? Because I think it would be a better way for them to uh, build up their brand and connect with fans than Twitter, which is you know, very limited videos and shitloads of abuse. You're getting updates all the time, but it's just people insulting you. You know, I think YouTube would be better. That's just my two cents on it. So yeah, this video is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but those are my thoughts on George Groves. As for the Badu Jack fight itself, it was a good fight and being in good fights always helps your stock. So I think George Groves could go back to the U S actually, if he wants to, and maybe he should, maybe he should go back to the U S and fight there because in the UK, it's kind of, I don't know where the public really are with George Groves at the moment. Maybe he needs to get away and clear his head or maybe go to Germany since he's signed to the Sauerlands and clear his head and sort himself out, you know, uh, the Badu Jack fight was close. It was competitive. And like I say, if he wants to go back to the US, I'm sure they'd welcome him because he was in a good fight. Uh, I feel that Jack probably just took the fight. But it could have gone either way. If it was in the UK, yeah, you could see it going to George Groves. So it wasn't a disgraceful performance by any stretch of the imagination. But Groves' arrogance, I think, really, really let him down. And thinking he was just going to walk through Badu Jack, thinking Badu Jack was going to be scared. Why would Badu Jack be scared? Badu Jack's fighting on basically his adopted home turf. He's a, a Mayweather fighter. And he was fighting on a Mayweather show 
in front of the people that he's around all the time, the surroundings that he's very familiar with. He trains in that environment in Vegas. I believe he lives there or uh, pretty much lives there. So he was the home fighter pretty much. Why would he be intimidated? This is what George Grove seemed to think going into the fight as though Jack's going to be, oh, you know, the, the reality of the situation is going to dawn on him and he's going to be frightened. And this is the stuff that George Groves was coming out with, man. Not quite in touch with reality, George. <laughs> you know, so anyway, long video. Sorry about that. Shout out to everyone that stayed to the end. Let me know what you think about everything I talked about. I'm out.